All right, testing one, two, testing one, two. Testing, testing. <clears throat> How is everybody doing tonight? Assuming you can hear me. Just waiting for this long ass delay. It's like 45 seconds. Let's bring that down. Bringing it down. Loud and clear, says Raymond. Doing pretty well? That's good, man. Good to hear, Raymond. Hey, hey, MD Mister, long time no see. <clears throat> All right, let's get things switched up here. Switching things up. God, I love the music in this game, man. It's so good. All right, well, that's it. I think we're good. So uh, welcome back to another stream, everybody. Uh, I was originally going to play Demon's Crest on Super Nintendo tonight, but uh, I worked up a trade with a friend for a analog Super NT. Uh, so sh some of you guys know I do RGB for most of my systems. Not all of them, but most of them. Super Nintendo is one of them. But my uh, two-chip Super Nintendo has the worst RGB out of like anything I've got. And uh, so I get a really soft image and it just I'm not really happy with the picture quality. Uh, but the Super NT will fix that. It'll look razor sharp like like an emulator, like some of my other stuff might, like with the AVS or Genesis through RGB. Uh, so we're going to delay uh, Demon's Crest to next week. So we're going to do Demon's Crest next week. I should have the Super NT by Saturday, Monday at the latest. And um, so yeah, instead I quickly whipped up a PS2 stream, uh, Ridge Racer 5. This is... A game I've been wanting to stream for actually a really long time. It's just I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, this is one of those games that uh, I got way back in the day. It was one of the very first PS2 games I got. Uh, so a little, little story. I got my PS2 in um, about halfway, a little less than halfway through 2001. So the PS2 in North America came out in like, I think it was like October 2000 or something like that. And then uh, they were really hard to get for six to eight months. And uh, I managed to find one at a store. Um, oh, it was uh, Starland, actually. Funny enough, Starland was a, was around back then as a local business, not an online retailer. But they had a PS2 for some reason. I think it was a brand new one. And uh, so I was able to lay claim to it while they were still hard to get. I think this was in May or June of 2001. And uh, so when I got it, I picked up a couple games. Uh, Ridge Racer 5 was in the first handful of games I picked up, along with games like Eternal Ring, uh, Cue Ball, and uh, Quake 3 Revolution. But Ridge Racer 5, ooh, and Time Splitters, actually. Um, Ridge Racer 5, along with Time Splitters, were my most played games in that first probably six months to a year of me owning a PS2. And you know what's funny? I haven't really put much time into this game since. Like, I've played a couple tracks here and there, but, man, I loved this game back then. And funny enough, this was the only Ridge Racer that I put significant time into. Uh, I've had almost every Ridge Racer. Actually, I think I've had just about every Ridge Racer, but I've barely played them. Uh, and it's a series that I know I would like. I just I just haven't had the urge to play them. But we're going we're gonna to try to change that. Maybe Ridge Racer 5 here will get me interested in playing Ridge Racer 6 that I've got on 360. And Ridge Racer 7, which I also have on PS3. And Rage Racer Type 4, which I have on, on PS1. So, but yeah, what this is going to be, this is going to be probably a two-hour-ish stream. It's not going to be a long stream. We're just going to play some tracks. We're going to do the uh, the campaign mode or whatever they call it in this game. And um, yeah, we're just going to we're just gonna wing it. So don't expect great performance. I haven't seriously put a lot of time into this since like 2001, 2002. So don't mind me. That was a long time ago. But it should be fun. Uh, it's a great game. It plays very well. It runs very smooth. It's pretty much always 60 frames a second, which was one of the great things about uh, the PS2 era is so many games back then were 60 FPS. Uh, it was a big jump from the previous generations where a lot of games were capped at 30 
at best. You know, with a couple of exceptions on like Dreamcast and whatnot. Dreamcast had some 60 FPS games, but PS2 had way more 60 FPS games, and this was one of them. So it's it's actually still quite nice to look at. I really like the graphic style on this, and uh, Namco was always really good with their uh, the graphic design and like the graphical user interfaces. Everything was very stylish, and that was something that the Ridge Racer games were always uh, kind of good at. They're, Especially with from Ridge Racer Type 4 and on, they were just very, very stylish. Um, so, very cool. We're gonna... should have a good time with this. So, uh, Obscure Game Reviews asks, Ever consider playing the Road Rash games? Uh, not really, because I haven't really played many of the Road Rash games. Not significantly. But I actually do get that question fairly frequently, because I know it's a, a popular series. Um, maybe sometime in the future, I'll, I'll give them a shot. But right now, I don't have any... Uh, I don't have any plans. Uh, Liberal Arts Guy says, How was Pinball? Uh, it was good. Um, I had a chance at winning the tournament, but I had to come home to stream. So, uh, I had to forfeit in the final match, which put me at second place. So I, I walked home with a tiny bit of cash, nothing crazy. Um, but yeah, I had to basically just uh, throw in the towel because... Because of you guys. So... Um, but it was fun. It was a lot better than last time. Uh, last month when I went to go do a, the monthly tournament, I didn't have a good time at all. I was sleep deprived and I was angry and uh, it was a lot better today. Uh, I had been eating better this week, uh, so I think my, my mind was in a better place. And, uh, and while I was sleep deprived today as well, I wasn't as sleep deprived. Um, and I did actually exercise. I got on the, the uh, spinner bike uh, this morning, so I think that probably helped as well. Helped my mood. Uh, but yeah, no, it was good. It was fun. Got to talk to a lot of people and it was good. So, but thanks for asking, liberal arts guy. Yeah, so for those of you guys that don't know, the reason I start late on the last Thursday of each month is there's, uh, at the local pinball place, there's a monthly tournament that happens last Thursday of each month on Thursday nights. And, uh, normally I can't go to pinball tournaments because I try to adhere to my overnight schedule, even on my days off. Uh, so I can't flip my schedule for tournaments on Saturdays or Sundays or something like that. So this is really the only event I can go to and like to get out and see people and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, it was fun. It was good. It's good to socialize. Uh, yeah. Leo says, should have left us hanging. I'd have done it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing is, if it was like a serious event where like you can take home like a thousand dollars or something, then yeah, of course I would, I would totally postpone it. But I mean, we're talking like, I think first place was like $70. Uh, second place was 25. Third place was 20. Uh, the splits are a little weird. Actually. I felt like second place should have gotten a little bit more like 35 or 40 or something, but, uh, I digress. Sorry for making you lose. <laughs> but yeah, so welcome to the stream, guys. Alpha AX, Carlos. Um, do I bet money when playing? I don't. Not usually. So, uh, some people do. But yeah, I don't expect to have a lot of people on this stream tonight. I mean, for one, we're starting late. Two, it's a PS2 game. And my PS2 streams don't seem to do very well. But who cares? I want to play the game. Because it's a great game. Uh, by the way, if anyone is interested in playing this game uh, as a result of watching this stream, uh, it is a super cheap game. I think it's still like three or four dollars. Uh, it's very common. It's very easy to get a hold of, and it is excellent value for the price. So, highly, highly recommend it. Um. But, uh, all right, so before we jump into things, uh, if you guys have any other questions before we get started, feel free to let me know. But also, let's go ahead and do the Patreon shoutouts. So, uh, thanks everyone that is continuing to back my channel on Patreon. If anyone out there is interested in supporting the show via Patreon, as usual, the links are in the description box below. Uh, you get special access to my Discord server, or a special portion of my Discord server. Uh, and you can also participate in question and answer sessions. I actually have a Q&A session ready to, or getting prepped right now. I'm looking for questions, so look on Patreon if you are a backer, and feel free to drop me some questions. Also, big shout out to uh, Classic Gaming Quarterly, aka Chris at Classic Gaming Quarterly, and uh, Brian Hornberger. They're actually brand new backers as of this week, so thanks a ton, guys, for supporting my show here. As little as a buck a month, as some of these guys are doing, is all that you need, so... And uh, it helps me out a ton. 
So also thanks to uh, our recent live stream super chatters. You guys have been killing it with the super chats. So thanks so much for that. That goes a long way, uh, especially with the ad revenue on YouTube being kind of crappy, uh, especially this time of the year. So thanks a ton, guys. And uh, also thanks to our channel members. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a channel member, there should be a join button on the main page. And if you become a channel member, you'll get these funky G emotes or icons next to your name. And you'll also get some custom emotes you can use like the doom guy or my cat patchouli or the gg so all right well with that guys let's go ahead and get into it yeah yeah md mister i do have ridge racer type 4 i've actually got the japanese version of that so uh, i've been many been meaning to put some time into that and i definitely want to i definitely want to put some time into that Um, yeah, Carlos, Rage Racer is a, I want to like that game, but it's got this, uh, this really weird mechanic where, like, you'll bump into walls, even though you don't, you're not actually physically touching the walls, like, so you can't, like, go off the course even the slightest bit, you'll hit an invisible wall, and I've never been able to wrap my head around that, and it's always kept me from enjoying that game. And I've owned it multiple times over the years. Like, people keep saying, like, oh, it's a great game once you get into it. And I keep trying it and failing. And I'm just like, all right, whatever. There are plenty of other Ridge Racer games that don't have that problem. So I will, uh, I will just skip it and not feel bad about it. <laughs> all right. All right. So I don't think I have any data on this, but let's check. Yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, exit without loading, yes. Let's check out our options here. Alright, so in this game, you can actually use the D-pad or you can use the analog sticks. And, um, this is one of those games that doesn't default to analog controls, apparently. You have to hit the, uh, the analog button on the PS2 to activate it. Uh, which is kind of interesting. So, let's see, shift up, shift down, rear view, rear view, change view, brake, accelerate, okay. Cool. I like those controls. Awesome. We'll stick with that. Let's do sound setup. Adjust screen. Don't really need to adjust anything here. Brightness. Uh... Okay. And of course, there's a music player as well, which is really cool. All right. So let's go ahead and just go to a new entry. We're going to go ahead and uh, punch in our name, most likely, or something like that. Uh, my HDMI modded system came, uh, yesterday, Leo, and I picked it up today. So we're going to be playing that on Twitch later tonight. Hey, Fatty, how are you, how have you been, man? Welcome back to the stream. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Liberal Arts Guy says, if you used a 60 gig backwards compatible PS3 for PS2 games, would they have better video quality than 480i? Uh... I don't know. My Life in Gaming actually did a video on that uh, sometime last year. So I recommend looking into that. I don't remember what they said about that. They basically compared uh, PS2 on a variety of different platforms. PS3 backwards compatibility, uh, stock PS2s themselves, and then can maybe I, I think some PS2 games are on PS4 even. I don't know if they compared those, but I recommend looking into that video. And uh, yeah, I recommend looking into that video. I need to get a refresher on that too. Now, a lot of PS2 games can actually display in progressive. Uh, a lot of PS2 games do have progressive scan modes, so which is something that a lot of people don't know. Uh, a lot of these early games, unfortunately, do not. Um, and I actually I don't mind 480i. Um, when you're viewing it on a CRT, I like how it uh, uh, it basically makes it look like it's a higher resolution. Uh, and I guess technically it is, but um, you know the only thing is you've, you've got that shimmer effect, which is kind of a bummer. Now, one of the nice things about streaming the PS2 uh, is I'm running through a FrameMeister, and the FrameMeister has really good deinterlacing. 
So you guys actually shouldn't be noticing like lots of shimmer or anything like that. Occasionally you'll notice uh, some lines, uh, some little, you know, a little bit of distortion. Um, you know, as things get crazy, um, but it's just a, a compromise you have to make when, uh, you know, you go through an upscaler like this. But, uh, oops, I thought that was uh, the driver name. Oh, well, whatever. All right, let's go ahead and uh, do red. And we'll do yes. And we'll do yes. And, okay, that's my US memory card. I've got two separate memory cards, one for my... Uh, Japanese games and shoot 'em ups, and then one for my uh, my US games. PS3 does native rendering of PS2 software. If your PS3 to an HD resolution, it will render 40p compatible capable games at 40i and de-interlace before it's game. Huh, that's weird, Leo. Interesting. Very interesting. I didn't know that. All right, so race. Design. Man, I, I love the uh just the the style here, man. Everything is just so fluid with like the animations and things like that. I'm a sucker for stuff like this. And back in 2000, this was like this was awesome. You know, not many games were uh were very stylish like this. Um, okay, let's view your car. Check your cars. Okay, we actually can't check our cars or anything. Um, I know you can play as different cars in this, and different cars have different handling. And so, you know, one thing that, uh, you know, is very helpful in this game is getting a car that handles to your liking and sort of sticking with that. Yeah, Grand Prix, time attack, free run. Free run is just like practice mode. And then, okay, so we'll do Grand Prix. Break away from the pack and claim first place. <laughs> well, I wouldn't, I mean, 1080i isn't really, if you, if you look at 1080i and then you look at 720p, 720p usually ends up looking better because it's smoother. It's uh, like a more solid image. Um, if you have a choice between 1080i and 720p, generally you want to just take 720p. Now, 1080p versus 1080i, obviously, or 1080p versus 720p, obviously you're going to take 1080p. But, oh, now we can select our car. Okay, cool. You can tell how long it's been since I played this game. Uh, so I'm trying to remember which car I used to really enjoy. Um, it's not that one. I don't remember if it's Mercurio. Actually, that looks looks familiar. Let's see. Might have also been. Might have been that one. Let's go ahead and try this one. Looks familiar to me. And we'll do automatic. I always play automatic in these racing games unless, like, I really dive deep into them. Uh, generally, higher level play will entail manual transmission. Uh, manual transmission oftentimes gives you more flexibility on um, uh, shifting, shifting, you know, from down to up or up to down when, when needed. But also, manual transmission often has higher top speeds. So, there you go. So once you get really good at these games, it's good to try to switch over to manual transmission and get the hang of them. So... PS2 is a phenomenal system. Um, and... Anyone that doesn't like it... Uh, I, all I have to say is they haven't dug deep enough into the library because, you know, it's it's awesome. It, it really is. I was uh, I was very, uh, very kind of anti PS2 when it came out because I was a Dreamcast fanboy. Um, but I mean, the fact is the PS2 is one of the best selling systems of all time, if not the best selling system of all time. And with with highly mainstream systems like that, you get. Lots of top-notch software because you know all the developers flock to the most popular consoles, and um, Three, two, yeah, so it's it's good stuff, man. 
Okay, so I'm gonna- I'm trying to figure out if I want to use the D-pad or the analog stick. Let's, uh... Oh wow, these analog controls are super stiff. Alright. I'm gonna do D-pad controls then. Can we restart? Um, no. Alright, we'll, we'll go ahead and just stick with it. Yeah, so you can use the analog controls, but you have to enable the analog controls by pressing the analog button on the controller. And, um... It was very stiff. It was weird. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use the D-pad. Kind of like playing uh, Ridge Racer Type 4 with just a standard PS1 controller. Not a DualShock controller. So in the Ridge Racer games, generally you you start turning and then you you tap the brake button and then you'll go into a power slide, and that's key to whipping around these corners at at high speeds. And again, you know you've got different cars with different uh, handling, so you need to try to figure you know find a car that handles to your liking, in terms of how you know power sliding is handled. So it looks like we've got three laps. We're in 11th place right now. And I probably shouldn't have power slided. There are a lot of turns you can get around without power sliding, but some turns you basically have to power slide. Or break, but... Man, you don't break in this game. You power slide. <laughs> Ridge Racer is one of those games where you just you just whip around the corners like crazy. And that's that's the fun of it. See, kind of like that. There we go. Yeah, if you guys out there watching haven't played the Ridge Racer games before, I highly recommend it if you like arcade-style racing games. I mean, arcade-style kind of has a negative connotation to it in a way, because usually I think a lot of people think with arcade-style, you just hold down the gas and that's it. Uh, and that's not necessarily true. A lot of arcade-style racing games have uh, techniques that are kind of required to be learned. And in Ridge Racer, you have to learn the power slide mechanic, otherwise you just won't survive. And I'm really failing at it. This game runs so smooth too, it's nice. We're actually on lap three, so we're not gonna do- we're not gonna... We're not gonna do too well. Should have put it on easy. <laughs> Easy's for chumps, though. Unless you're playing Splatterhouse 2010 for the first time, then I recommend easy. Yeah, this is actually one of those games where I'd, I'd like to have a, uh, a CRT in my uh, my chain here, so I can play it on that while I'm streaming for you guys. Hey, no reason. Uh, John did not do a uh, Ridge Racer 5 video, as far as I'm aware. One of my favorite racing games. Yeah, man, it's been a little while. I think you popped in a couple weeks ago. But yeah, no, thanks for stopping in, dude. It's always good to see you. All right, so we're gonna have to redo that. Hey, John. Uh, my favorite racing games are mostly um, older arcade-style racing games. Uh, Outrun, Outrun 2, Outrun 2006. Stuff like that. Uh, then some futuristic racing games. F Zero and F Zero X in particular. <clears throat> uh, Scorcher on the Sega Saturn and PC. It's another futuristic racer. Uh, some of the Wipeout games like Wipeout XL, uh, Wipeout 64. Uh, I would definitely put Razor Rage Racer 5 up there. Uh, Sega Rally Championship. Yeah, I'm definitely more into the arcade-style stuff when it comes to my racing games. Okay. 
And actually, what's kind of sad is I haven't played many racing games in, uh... Man, the last long, good long while. I can't even remember the last time I bought, like, a new racing game. Uh, I did buy Forza 5, but I barely played it, and I still have it. And it's kind of dated now, um, by, by modern gen standards. But, uh, it is still, still fun, based on what I played. Ridge Racer 64 is also another one. You know, I said this is the only Ridge Racer I put a lot of time into. That's not true. Uh, I always, I keep forgetting I put a lot of time into Ridge Racer 64 as well. You've got quite a few races in like the championship mode or whatever it's called in that game. And I got near the end of it. It gets really hard. Like insanely hard. Jesus Christ, come on, man. These guys are jackasses, man. They just slam right into you and it just completely screws you up. That's actually really annoying. I hate it when racing games do that. Where the AI just doesn't care. They just bump into you. It's bumper cars. Rage bumper cars! The only benefit is when they hit you from behind because they can actually give you a speed boost. Now, there, you can use a uh, third-person camera, which I should probably try. But I find that when you're in third-person, like, the controls almost feel a little bit weirder. I've always played this game mainly in uh, first-person. And this is as far out as you can get it zoomed. I'd prefer, like, a slightly uh, longer uh, draw distance on this. Not draw distance, but uh, a, f a camera that's farther back would be nice. Looks like we might at least get third place. I think you have to get at least third to progress. I think. I could be wrong. You might have to get first, for all I know. Hey, Aaron, Cruising USA. Yeah, Cruising is a fun game. You surprised he hasn't done a Mega SG video. Yeah, he might. He might. Uh, no reason? Yeah, I am going live on Twitch later, yeah. Yeah, the thing about the Horizon games is that, you know, they got that whole open world concept, and I'm not sure if I'm really into that right now. Although I did have a uh, Need for Speed, uh, God, what the hell was it called? It was the one that was on the Wii U. Um... Leo, if he's still out there, he probably, he knows the name. And I actually did enjoy that, so maybe I would enjoy Forza Horizon. But my big thing with those is that I know they're going to be, like, time sinks. And uh, it's hard for me to start new games like that that require major time commitments to get the most out of. Because I'm always practicing old school games for you guys. You guys eat up all my time. Alright, so... Alright, let's try this next one. Yeah, so this requires you to play very, very well. Like, you know, I actually raced decently on that track, and uh, I only ended up in third. I'm going to go back in the first person as well. Yeah, we're going to stick with first person right now. Yeah, this really makes you want to fire Ridge Racer 6. <laughs> What's up with that? Man, it's so hard to uh, get this power slide right, too. You can also, you know, slide briefly by just, like, letting go of gas and then tapping it again. And that's actually probably one of my problems, is not using that strategy. Wow. 
Yeah, so this course is like the signature classic Ridge Racer course that it's featured in probably every Ridge Racer game. And it's it's good it's good track design. I'm actually I'm glad they keep reusing it. I mean it's a way to pay tribute to the older games in the series. But it's also still a good course. You know, it's and it's nice to see uh, the, the different iterations of it over the years. I really like I really like this uh, Ridge Racer 5 version of it. There was actually no reason for me to try to power slide there. <laughs> I was actually gaining a lot of speed too. That was dumb on my part. I'm not looking forward to the archive of this going up. I feel like I'm going to end up with a lot of copyright claims. We'll see. We'll see. I haven't had copyright claims in a while, but I'm always scared to do Namco stuff. Because I have had some copyright claims from Namco games in the past. Okay, could you get off me, please? All right, still on lap two, so we have a chance. We just need at least third. He still has a chance. Can he gain the lead? It's the final lap. That was wicked. Wow. I wonder if you can turn the announcer off. I don't think you can. Actually, you might be able to. I think there are three volume options. I'm assuming one is for voice. Or maybe I'm mistaken. I'll have to double check. Ow, jeez, man. All right, well, this isn't good. We might end up having to redo this course, too. That's fourth. And this is, yeah, damn, man. And we lost. I think you have to at least get third. When I count hard driving as trash, hard driving has its charm if you play the arcade version. <clears throat> oh man, better than Europe will be. <laughs> yeah, uh, Europe. The race is about to start. We're bringing you this race today. Uh, Game Gear, yeah. Oh yeah, I hate the copyright trolls, no reason. That's really annoying. Um, my plan is to eventually get a Sega or an analog Mega SG that just came out. Um, they're going to be compatible with Game Gear games. That's going to be the best way to play Game Gear. Uh, but I absolutely want to stream Game Gear because I, I grew up with the Game Gear. It was my first handheld. So I have a major soft spot for it. Oh, I absolutely want to stream Game Gear. Check him out. Yeah, so it actually seems like you pretty much have to do perfect right from the beginning. And if you don't, you're just screwed. You're not going to catch up. And I keep messing up with my power slides. I keep bumping into walls. And as you can see, these guys get ahead like crazy if I do that.
All right. Two laps to go. Yeah, unfortunately, John, it, it, it looks like it's not going to be. Um, Those people over there, man, have their heads up their rears so far that uh, it's it's not good. It's not good. But we're not gonna get into that. That's <laughs> that's a depressing topic. We don't want to talk about topics like that. <laughs> These are supposed to be at least mildly happy streams. I think one of the I think the red guy bumped into me. There we go. Got to cut those corners. You have to cut the corners in racing games. That's how you uh That's how you shave time. It's gonna put us at second. Look at that. So for those of you guys that don't play a lot of racing games, the trick is to be on the outskirts of the track and then cut the corner, at, you know, in the turn. So like this. Notice how I, I veered off to the outside of the, of the track and then I cut the corner. Very basic stuff, but it's crucial that you do that in just about any racing game. There are some exceptions, but if a racing game is semi, you know, even semi-realistic, that's going to be uh, an almost necessary strategy. Of course, with the weird power slide mechanic in this, you can actually cut the corner early, then power slide, and still make it without uh, without losing too much time. And these guys are like whipping around the corners without even uh, without even stopping when they power slide. Oh, you dick! He cut me off. Uh, there are actually only like 36 games for 32x, something like that. Yeah, and a couple of them are FMV CD games you'll never want to play. Uh, Analog has talked about doing a uh, digital to analog uh, converter so you could actually uh, use the 32X, although you'd end up having to, uh, you know, <laughs> not use it on an HD TV. Yeah, 32X has some good games on it. I enjoy it. I've got one. We're gonna actually probably do a 32x variety stream sometime in the near future. I think it's been uh, it's been about two and a half years since I did my last one here, and uh, so we'll definitely definitely do that. Race is about to start. We're bringing you this race. Three, two, one, go! Most systems out there have uh, worthwhile games on them, even if they have small libraries like the 32x. Most. There are some systems that I just feel like aren't really worth messing with. But 32X, Sega CD, stuff like that, it's it's fun. I love playing Virtua Fighter, uh, Virtua Racing, Knuckles Chaotix, Doom, NBA Jam Tournament Edition, Mortal Kombat 2, stuff like that. Zaxxon's Mother Base 2000, Stellar Assaults, really good. There's some fun stuff on the 32X. He's 
We've got the perfect weather conditions for a Grand Prix today. Yeah, I'm gonna try to do more variety streams. I know I've been talking about that, but I've been I've been kind of busy lately with uh, with other games and like these last two weeks in particular, I've been selling off some of my collection again, trying to recoup some funds, and uh, that's always really busy for me. Like when I sell stuff on forums, I just I'm constantly calculating shipping prices and packing stuff up and shipping them out and whatnot communicating to the individuals that all takes time and so I haven't been focusing on like organizing variety streams but we'll definitely do that sometime hopefully soon we'll have a good variety stream or three <laughs> hopefully more than one 32x will definitely be one of them uh, I've been wanting to do a Nokia engage stream for quite a while I've got a, a camera set up where I'll point the camera at it. And then uh, I got a uh, headphone adapter to where I can run it into my line in on my sound card, like I do with my uh, retro PC streams. So you we should get direct audio capture on that at the very least. Uh, yeah, stuff like that. Some obscure stuff in particular. I want to do a Neo Geo CD stream again. It's been uh, about two years since I did one of those. So many different things to cover in this channel, man. It's just so many different things. Like here, we're doing PS2. This is the first time we've streamed PS2 in. I don't think we've streamed PS2 since uh, Eternal Ring, and Eternal Ring was like a year ago. <laughs> I'd like to do more PS2. It's got, you know, like I said, it's got a great library. I wish this had like a slipstream mechanic where, you know, if you're sitting behind uh, an opponent, there's like less wind resistance on you, and so you, you speed up faster. I wish they had that mechanic in this game. Because the AI is kind of nasty, and this is just normal mode. Remember, there is a hard mode on top of this. You know, one thing I could also try doing is changing cars and seeing if uh, the handling's better with a different car. Which might entirely be possible. Uh, no liberal arts guy, you can do that. You can start a YouTube channel and do that yourself. Have fun! Hell, you might actually gain a significant following from doing something like that. People like wacky things on YouTube. God, these guys are dicks, man. They just keep running into you. At least we got second. <laughs> Start with Doom or end with Doom? Uh... I don't even know if I'll play Doom on 32X if I do a variety stream. Because I've covered that game so many times on my channel. Oh, that's right. We did do uh, uh, Lament of Innocence on PS2. Yeah, that was October. Good point, John. Haha, <laughs> what a drift! <laughs> What's going on, Mike? <sighs> All right. Wish I got a larger Diet Coke at McDonald's. <laughs> All right, round four. Okay, this is our last round, actually. No, that's right. We did dupe in that game. We learned how to dupe. <laughs> uh, 
That was actually pretty funny. Oh, that was not wicked. That was wickedly bad. All right, I wonder how they're going to mix up this course. We've already played this one once. And if you can't get your power slides right, you are not going to have a good time. So, like, I... I power slided, but I ended up cutting the corner too close, just like that. Cut the corner too close, and I bumped it into the wall. Oh, this is how it mixes it up. We go left now. Okay. Normally, we would have gone straight. That notification sound that pops up, it's the same one they use in Serious Sam. <laughs> they must have, uh, they must have just used like a canned sound effect package for some of these sound effects. A lot of studios do that, they just use like, uh, you know, they buy like a sound sample package that other studios have access to. And so you'll, you'll hear uh, sound effects be reused from game to game to game. Even, you know, between different studios and companies. There's actually a game I was playing, I forgot what it was. God, I have to remember. It wasn't that, it was just a couple weeks ago. I was playing uh, some random game and it used the Doom shotgun sound effect. I was like, what? You actually hear a, a lot of a lot of sound effects reused that you that you hear in Doom, made kind of famous from Doom, like the the, op the door opening sound and the, uh, the, the like the enemy grunt sounds in the distance, like monster growls. You even hear them in like horror movies and things like that. What game was it? I was thinking about it. I can't remember. Yeah, still hit the wall. Alright, so now we go left. Well, we're in second at least. That's good. have one more lap after this too so we're in we're in good shape actually we're probably not gonna get first because this guy just it's too far ahead we're not too far ahead but when, yeah he keep just keeps slowly getting ahead as I bump into walls hey video game obsession and Jimbo and BVZ welcome back guys
All right, so we've got about a minute, minute and a half to go. You can tell it takes a little over two minutes to get through each lap. Ah, see, that could have been it. We've if I if I cleared that just fine, we might have really caught up to him. I mean, we're close, but I don't know. We'll see. Oh, come on! That's the kind of crap I'm talking about. You get up close and they just slam right into you. Like, ah! I hate that, man. That's really, really annoying. Ooh, and that's it. Yeah, we're not catching up. Man, we could have had it. We could have had first place, but no, he's slamming it into the wall. He's like, I don't care about you. No more DOS games. Uh, I don't know what you mean by that, Jimbo. The race is about to start. We're bringing you this. Wait, what? Live from Bayside Line. This I'm confused. One hot race. Three, two. Dude, you know how much one. stuff I do. How many like like the wide variety of stuff I cover here? Did it we? Oh no! Did I? What? I'm confused. I think I might have accidentally uh, restarted. What? I'm so confused. Ever consider playing Marvel vs. Capcom? Uh, I did Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on Dreamcast a couple years ago. Um, let's see... Has anyone seen the Captain Marvel movie? I have not. So, what was the Pac-Man thing? Uh, it was just Namco uh, integrating their classic video game properties into uh, certain elements of the game. Like, uh, when you uh, like get to a checkpoint or complete a lap, it tells you like how far ahead or how far... I don't even know. You can, you can see it when it pops up. But yeah, Namco's always used uh, a lot of their classic arcade game properties in the Ridge Racer games. Um, for instance, every car has um, every car has uh, designs from their classic arcade properties. Like the car I'm using has a, a sponsor on it called Galaga, which was a Namco arcade game. Um, Juraga is actually on the uh, the windshield, and that's another Namco arcade game. But yeah, no, I mean, Jimbo, like, dude, I do so many different things here, man. Like, I'm going to do more DOS stuff. Like, I, I don't understand why you're saying no more DOS stuff. Huh? It's like, yeah, maybe not right now, but I will do more DOS stuff in the future. And no, I'm not playing Mega Rays because the game sucks. <laughs> it's actually a terrible game. But, it's all right, man. Rest assured, like, anything that's out there, almost anything that's out there, any console, any platform that I have the capability of capturing, I will probably do it at some point in time. But I do so much stuff here, so many different platforms, that I'm not going to do, like, three months of MS... What the hell is that? I'm not going to do, like, three months of MS-DOS stuff, you know? Um, one of the things about my channel is I have to mix things up 
because a lot of people subscribe for different reasons. Some people only want to see NES. They don't even want to see DOS stuff. They don't even want to see PS2, which is sad, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, some people want to see MS-DOS stuff. Some people don't. Some people really don't care at all. Uh, so I try to balance things out. I try to mix things up. Uh, I even do the occasional modern game to appease some of the guys out there like Mike, who likes the modern stuff. But I personally want to play more DOS games on stream, but because I know how my channel works and what, you know, what gets people interested, I have to mix things up, even if I want to do something else. So yes, we will be doing more DOS stuff. Absolutely. But no Mega Race, because that game's terrible. Alvin enjoys the gaming all night. Hell yeah. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, BVZ says uh, Ridge Racer 1 had Galaga at the beginning of the game. Yeah. Uh, those early Namco PS1 games, I think most of them, if not all of them, had that in the very beginning. So, like, Ridge Racer, Tekken. What else was there? What was the Namco do in the beginning? Assault Rigs? Was it Assault Rigs? No, it was something else. I don't think that it had it, actually. But that was that was a treat in the uh, the early days of PS1. When companies like Namco did that. You could just have a classic arcade game on the load screen. It was really cool. There are many race events going on in Ridge City. Don't forget to check them all out and enjoy racing to the max. By the way, I don't even have Mega Race, so I can't stream it even if I wanted to. <laughs> I think the only one I have access to is the Sega CD one, and that's extra terrible. Whoa! Are we actually first place? Hey, Jose! Can't read your text, but I see your name. Yeah, so the, the Pac-Man and the Ghost go by, they tell you how far ahead or how far behind you are your, uh, your next opponent. But he's right behind me, based on the time it showed. No, see, God... Mm. This guy is really aggravating. He's right next to me, I can hear him. It actually would be beneficial to turn the game music down just a little bit so you can hear the engines a little bit better. Because that's how you can tell if uh, an opponent is to the left or the right hand side of you. And there are stereo sound effects in this game. And you can also use the reverse function to see how far back he is. I feel like I'm finally getting into the groove of this game, too. There we go. Wow, look at that. We're even making that turn without bumping into walls. Of course, it also helps when you don't have opponents right next to you. You know, when it's just you and the turn, it's so much easier to make the power slide work. But when you've got opponents next to you, you know, you have to think, okay, do I want to go to the outside of the uh, the opponent, or do I want to try to cut the corner and get past them that way? And that's risky. It's very risky. You can either bump into the wall as a result, or you can bump into the opponent as you try to cut the corner between the opponent and the wall.
Wow, we might actually get first place on this one. Yeah, we're actually way far ahead, finally. But that's what happens when you race well. Like, I didn't bump into many walls there. All right, let's see. desk I <laughs> the handle on my one of my desk drawers it sticks out because it's busted and it's super sharp on the corner and I just bumped my my hand right into it Ow, that hurts uh, you have successfully cleared this round Congratulations. you've been awarded a trophy for the victory so I wonder if you have to get like I don't know if it tallies up points or, or whatnot I wonder if you had to get first place on that last course in order to pass the whole Grand Prix. Let's see. Uh, hold on. Let's see what does it say. Crazy Taxi? Obscure Game Reviews is gone. Ridge Racer 1. Hey, hey, Jules. I didn't see you out there, man. Um... Our Gamer 42. One of your childhood games. Yeah, no, this is a, this is a great game. Yeah, it might not be the best Ridge Racer, but it is still a fantastic game. And one of the things I, I love... Um, yeah, one of the things I, 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 I like about this game isn't necessarily, you know, the game itself, but it's that it's so affordable. Like, I recommend it to everybody because it's so cheap. Like, anybody can pick it up really cheap. Yeah, it looks like we unlocked a bunch of stuff. Yeah, so we're about an hour into the stream. We'll probably go for another hour. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Jose would like me to plat or play Demon's Crest sometime this year. Yeah, Jose, I am. Next week. Uh, I was going to do Demon's Crest tonight, but then I moved it back to next week because I'm receiving a analog Super NT. Uh, either Saturday or Monday. So I was like, well, if I'm going to get that, I might as well just wait. Because I've already done Demon's Crest once. Um, or technically twice. I did a Let's Play of it, and then I did a live stream. Um, and both were going through my Frame Meister, through my actual Super Nintendo. Uh, so I'm, if I'm going to do it a, a third time, I might as well do it with even better video quality. So we're going to use the Super NT for it. Uh, so that'll be next Thursday. And that'll be at the normal time, too. Um, Tekken 5 was a treat. Yeah, Tekken 5 had a lot of really cool stuff in there. Like, you could play the Starblade arcade game. Yeah. Uh, let's see, I'm just going through the chat here. Oh man, yeah, my my next this desk needs to be replaced soon. It's it's about seven years old and it's it was like a hundred dollar Target desk, so it's it's not the sturdiest thing and it's all scraped up. I think I'm gonna get one of those uh, quote unquote gaming desks that have like the uh, uh, well for one they're wide, uh, but also they uh, they have these pads that sit on the top of the desk. It's just like a desk wide mouse pad. Uh, which which should be pretty nice. Should make it more comfortable to type on, but also I won't have to worry about a mouse pad. Uh, so that'll be cool. But I don't think I'm gonna be able to get that anytime soon. I don't have the money for it. But that's that's the ultimate goal, is to make that upgrade sometime. And I'm thinking about rearranging my game room setup here because I don't really use it as a game room anymore. It's just a stream room. So I'm gonna basically create a bigger workspace for myself. 
that spans a, a larger wall. And uh, I'm gonna try to have my, uh, I'm gonna have a VGA computer monitor in the chain, so for when I do PC stuff, classic PC stuff, uh, I'll be able to use a VGA monitor instead of, uh, or VGA CRT instead of a modern LCD. All right. Check your engine. Uh, what does it matter whether it's via an actual cart or a flashcard? Does it does it matter when it comes to just us playing the game? I don't think it does. Hey, Roy! Oh yeah, no, definitely try this one, man. Uh, like I said, it's a really cheap game. Like, here, I'm gonna check Starland's website, and Starland's usually more expensive. And so if it's cheap at Starland, you know, like, it's gonna be super cheap everywhere else. Let's see. Haha! <laughs> They sell it for four dollars when they have it in stock. Complete. That's box and manual and everything. Um, and so you could probably get it for like two bucks elsewhere if you if you look hard enough. Yeah, no, it's it's awesome. It's for the money, especially in this market where like everything is going up in price. Man, PS2 is a gold mine for great cheap games. All right, so let's go ahead and race again. That room must be hot as hell. It's actually not, Mike. It's actually pretty, pretty decent. Uh, I basically have my Ryzen system, my main computer. My main computer stays really cool. I've got good cooling in it. Um, so it does not heat up the room. Um, and what's actually funny is my Windows 98 machine has one, two, three, four, five, six fans on the case. Uh, and so it actually makes the room colder when I'm running it. Almost too cold. Because there's so much air blowing out of it. But yeah, I have my main desktop, three LCD monitors, and then one lamp, and that's pretty much it. So it actually doesn't get uh, hot in here, which is good. I love this main menu theme. I could listen to it all day. Advanced level class utilizes high performance tuned up cars. And we'll do, uh. Hmm. I guess we have to do, uh. Oh, I see. Okay, let's actually go back for a second. Do standard. Oh, it's one series only. Okay, so you, you do the standard uh, class and then you unlock extra. And there are a bunch of uh, Grand Prix in the extra class. So now we've got bravery. So this should mean higher speeds and things like that, which is nice. Hey, Katmir, welcome to the stream. Yeah, Ridge Racer 5 is one of those games that was discounted pretty quickly. Like, when I, when I bought it in 2001, I don't even think I paid 25. Granted, I think I bought a used copy. I think it, was, it probably only cost me like 10 or 15 bucks, and this was like, not even a full year after it was out, like, stuff dropped really quickly back then. Uh, I have, Mike, I actually, I have Tokyo Extreme Racer Zero on PS2. Hold on, let me double check. Um... Yeah. Yeah, I do. We're gonna do a stream of that sometime. Um... I wanted to do the original Dreamcast version, but I don't... Actually, I think I might have it on my GDMU. If I don't, I can add it. Yeah, I wanted to originally do the Dreamcast version. But Zero is also great. It's basically like a port of Tokyo Extreme Racer 2. Yeah, so th those are great games. Hey, guns. Yeah, liberal arts guy. The only stuff on PS2 that's going to go up in price in the near future is the stuff that didn't sell that well, um, or is more niche. So like Gradius Five has gone up in price. It's like 
it's like 70 plus dollars now, I think. Um, Kingsfield 4, I think, is like 30 or 40 at this point. You know, stuff like that will go up in price. But your stuff like Ridge Racer 5, your Tekken Tags, Devil May Cry, stuff like that. Metal Gear Solid 2, none of that stuff is going up in price anytime soon. If ever, really. Alright, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually try, uh... I must... Oh, do I have? I might have to play as this car, actually. It wasn't letting me move. Yeah, so, huh, that's interesting. It's forcing me to, uh, use the same car. Okay. So I guess we're stuck with the same car. Yeah, Tokyo Extreme Racer Zero, I think, is another one of those that is actually still really cheap. So if you guys are into PS2 and you want uh, some good racing games, like that's a, that's a good one to pick up. We're bringing you this race today, live from Outer Pass. Yeah, well, you should check, Leo, and see if you have it. Three, two, one, go! Yeah, Gran Turismo 4 is a really cheap game, so is Gran Turismo 3. This is a good track, music track. some acid lines in there. I love that. Yeah, we're definitely a little bit faster now. So how these games oftentimes work is uh, the farther in you get, the you know, the bigger engines you get, the faster your cars go, and so the racing becomes quicker and quicker. This is definitely a step up from the previous uh, circuit. <laughs> he goes, whoa, that's some wicked steering. All I need is a dude at the end of that. Still on lap two. Nice. That was a good turn. It put me ahead. Finish line is just up 
There we go, first place. Best lap too. Yeah, I remember getting Tokyo Extreme Racer 3 the day it came out, and something about it just turned me off. Like, it didn't, uh... It's like it didn't look and feel like the previous ones. It could have just been all in my head. I need to revisit it, but I don't have a copy of it anymore. Yeah, I only have zero. I had uh, Tokyo Extreme Racer Drift 1 and 2, but I never played them. I ended up getting rid of them. But I don't have Tokyo Extreme Racer 3 right now. I'll have to see how much it is and see about picking up another copy. Or not. I might not, because I already have zero and I haven't really put much time into it uh, anytime recently, so... It is quite different. Okay, so it wasn't just me. Uh, I have Roy. I actually have the uh, the first Ridge Racer PSP game. Wasn't there a second one? But yeah, I do have the uh, the original one that came out a uh, long, long time ago. There are more cars on Tokyo Extreme Racer Zero than on Two. Okay, I didn't know that. I figured it was probably about the same. That's awesome. I'm actually kind of curious now that we're talking about this. I wonder what Tokyo Extreme Racer Zero goes for. I'm going to pull that up real quick. Check Starlay's website. Wow, it's only nine bucks still. That's good. It used to be like three or four dollars all day, but nine is still really reasonable. And then, so if Starlay is selling it for nine bucks, you can probably get it cheaper elsewhere. You know, uh,. Ebay or something like that. Yeah, it's... I mean, the Dreamcast versions are a lot more expensive. I think part one on Dreamcast is like 15 or 20 now. Uh, part two is probably like 50 bucks. I'm guessing. It was like 30 a few years ago. I know a lot of Dreamcast stuff is going up. The second Ridge Racer on PSP, the same as the first one, but just with more content. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about uh, GameCube stuff, Alpha, is like, yeah, it's it's expensive. Um, what's cool is that some of the games did get re-released in the Wii. Like, uh, Pikmin. Pikmin 1 and 2 got re-released in the Wii with updated controls. Uh, you can get the Metroid Prime Trilogy on the Wii. Although the first Metroid Prime is still pretty cheap. Uh, so there are some alternatives like that. Um, Wind Waker and uh, yeah, Wind Waker got ported to Wii U and it's super cheap on Wii U. Uh, there are a couple things like that. And uh, but yeah, a lot of the other stuff has gone up in price, unfortunately. But, uh, What's my favorite PS2 game? Uh, I don't think I can name one specific favorite. Uh, well, Devil May Cry would definitely be up there as, as one of my favorites. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, Devil May Cry. Mm, Escaluda, which is a cave shoot -em up I only got a Japanese release. Um, let's go through my list here. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to like not leave anything out, but you know the funny thing about PS2 is while it's I think it's an amazing system like I Don't have like a single specific game on it usually That I say that's my favorite like because it has so many damn good games on it Like I, I almost can't even pick one I mean, definitely Double May Cry. 
I mean, if I had to pick one absolute favorite, it would probably be Double May Cry. Um, Gradius Five, R Type uh, Final, stuff like that. Oh, Frequency, Frequency would be up there. Devil May Cry, Frequency, Espigaluda. Um, targeting the rhythm games, but the Beatmania 2DX series. I still got my controller in a bunch of those games. Yeah, too, man, so many good games on PS2. Hey, Timu. Did I ever give Super Mario Sunshine a try? Uh, I did not. Because I ended up giving it back to my friend who let me borrow it. Uh, my buddy Edon let me borrow it, and I ended up giving it back to him because it sat on my shelf for months. And I was like, dude, I don't think I'm going to get to it anytime soon, so I just gave it back to him. Uh, but yeah, hopefully in the future I'll, I'll try it. We're bringing you this race today, live from above the city. We're in for some serious racing action today. Three, two, one. Go. All right, nighttime course. I like this. And they're off. The cars are screaming I think this might be our first nighttime track. Three laps to go. Yeah, so this has the uh, the the same effect that's in Tokyo Extreme Racer, but it's not as pronounced here. Where the car lights, like the brake lights, they uh. They sort of blur, leave trails behind them as the cars turn. That was a really noteworthy effect in Tokyo Extreme Racer. I don't think Tokyo was the first game to do it, but it was the first game to do it as pronounced as it did. And this game has it as well. But it's, it, woo, that was some poppin'. Normally this game doesn't have a ton of pop in, but man, those buildings just came in out of nowhere. There, we're in fourth place. Yeah, definitely getting the hang of the handling. Hmm. Of course, right as I say that, oof. Still in lap two. We still got a chance for first place. Yeah, it's always at what the same part those buildings pop in. Interesting. Dude kept bumping into me. It's just, it's just this guy and, and I. Oh, I, we just screwed it up. We lost it. I don't think we're going to be able to catch up. Okay.
Yeah, more pop in. <laughs> wow, we got it. Hell yeah. Our best lap again. Yeah, team, we were talking about it earlier about how how the PS2 has so many good games on it. And it usually is is that way for the most popular console on the market. Like I mentioned before, you know, with the most popular consoles, you have the most developers flocking to it. You know, greater uh, potential sales. Uh, greater sale potential. And um, so you end up getting uh, the best developers, you know, on the platform. And thus you end up getting, you know, yeah, you get a lot of junk titles because everyone's flocking to it. But you also usually have the greatest uh, amount of top-notch, high-quality games. This actually might be... Okay, no, it's not. All right. Thanks, Jules. Yeah, PS2s unfortunately weren't that reliable. Um, and I, I often like to say the only reason people forget about the PS2's reliability issues is that the Xbox 360 happened. <laughs> PS2s were notorious for, for breaking. Uh, you know, I worked in video game retail from about a year after the PS2 came out until until about the X, the time the Xbox 360 came out. So I got to witness basically the whole generation uh, from the stance of a re retail employee, video game retail. And man, these suckers were defective all the time. Remember back at Starland, when they had just a local store, um, they would do PS2 repairs, and they'd have, like, walls full of, of, of PS2s, broken PS2s. It was crazy. Um, generally, disc read issues. Either it wouldn't read DVDs, or it wouldn't read blue discs. That was a common issue. Um, but then you'd have other issues, too, like the fans would die, and then the system would overheat. Uh, it was really bad. I, I want to say, back in the day, people had... I think stats were given out. It was like one out of every four PS2s would die at some point in time. And when you've got a system that's selling as many units as it is, that's, that's a lot of systems. But again, I, 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 again, I like to say the only reason people forget about it is that the Xbox 360 happens. <laughs> you guys, you guys can thank Microsoft for that one. Um, but still, I mean, when it's good and reliable, it's uh, it's a fantastic system. So, fortunately, like with PS2 Slims, they still have issues as well. But their lasers are actually really easy to replace. I think probably anyone could do it. So I might need to get a a new laser for my US Slim. I replace uh, got the laser replaced my Japanese Slim. But we were getting uh, discs uh, skipping on the full motion videos on Devil May Cry this morning when I streamed on Twitch. Oh, right. The race is about to start. We're bringing you the... Three, two, one, go! Yeah, the Xbox 360 is red ring issue. Uh, was oh, it was absolutely awful. Microsoft lost a crap ton of money on that. But uh, the way they handled it though was was respectable. You know, they actually handled it very well, which which was good for like you know instilling customer goodwill. But uh, something like, I, I remember Stop Skeletons from Fighting, they did a video on it, uh, I think probably two years ago, about the Xbox 360 Red Ring issue. And I think they said something like 60%, maybe even 70% of all early Xbox 360 systems would die at some point in time, you know. 
I like that staggering, man. Um, We've got the perfect weather conditions for a Grand Prix today. You know, fortunately, the Slim, you know, Microsoft came out with the Slim in 2010. And uh, there were other revisions before the Slim that supposedly fixed the Red Ring issue. But uh, the Slim had, uh, I believe it was designed differently internally, so it... it um, it, uh, it wouldn't have that same issue. But man, those first, <laughs> those first five years, oof. I personally, uh, bought an Xbox 360 on day one, and it actually treated me perfectly fine up until the day I sold it. In, I think it was 2008, I think, is when I sold it. And, uh, I've said it before on streams, I always wonder, like, what happened to that 360. I'm just personally curious how long it lasted. It, you know, if it ever did die. Uh, the thing is, I do generally take care of my systems. You know, I clean out the vents and stuff like that. Uh, one common issue I would see on, on dead PS2s back in the day is people would let their vents get caked up. Um... You know, just about every busted PS2 I saw back in the day was dirty, so like... I think some PS2 issues probably could have been mitigated by, uh... Just better upkeep. There are many race events going on in Bridge City. You know, not keeping the system in uh, an entertainment center that's like enclosed. Where things just heat up and it can't ventilate properly, but also... Keeping its vents clean, you know, taking taking a can of air or a vacuum to it or something like that every now and then. Like, I remember my brother's PS2 and his 360, actually, which did eventually red ring. And we were actually talking about that last week. He brought that up. But uh, his PS2, man, I'd have to clean it for him. I'd be like, dude, clean out your vents. <laughs> it was caked up. It's just completely brown in the vents. You couldn't even see inside the system. So that was that was also that was an issue. Some PS2 failures I think were undoubtedly due to poor upkeep on the owner's part. It's not looking like we're gonna catch up with these guys. We're you know, I need to get at least third place. But it is not working right now. They just keep veering ahead. They keep pulling ahead. Still have a Can he the final lap. No, I don't know. Here we go. We're catching up. Wow. Great okay, there we go. Oh, no. That's bad. Good turn, though. That was tight. Nice. Yeah, so sometimes I'm turning and tapping brake to do a big power slide. And then other times I'm just letting go of gas and then and then holding gas again immediately. Just like briefly letting go. And then that lets me do like a very quick pseudo power slide. Ooh, that was bad. The other guy might catch up now. I hear him behind me. Yep, there he is. Yeah, definitely not gonna get first place. Oh, too close to that wall. And that's it, yeah. Well, second's better than better than than third.
Did I like Ridge Racer 6 on 360? I did. I haven't played it a ton, but uh, that was actually the first game I bought on 360 back in the day. Uh, so yeah, no, I do like it. I want to go back to it and, and actually go through the game and beat it. The original Xbox is a tank, yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, I mean, the original Xbox is a great system, uh, but I would argue that the PS2 has a much, uh, I'd say, wider variety of games. Wider variety of high-quality games. Uh, Mike says he used to do Red Ring of Death mods on the 360, put Arctic Silver on it. And a dual 360 fan mod. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, Leo, I'd like to see more OG Xbox games come to, uh, come to Xbox One backwards compatibility. Hey, Office, welcome back. All right. Yeah, one of the other things about PS2 is, well, for one, the PS1 compatibility, but also it's got a much uh, more notable import scene. So if you're into Japanese games, the PS2 has way more variety there than the Xbox. It's just a much more fully-fledged library overall. I mean, the Xbox actually has a lot of games, believe it or not. It's... God, what's the count? I think the Xbox has something stupid, like 700 games or something. I, was, I think I was looking at a list. I was like, where did all these games come from? <laughs> the system was only on the market for like five years. But yeah, and it, you know, it's got a lot of games on it, but it's also got, you know, eh. Some of the multi-platform games were definitely the best on it. But some of its exclusives were like, eh, especially in the early days, are kind of hokey. Like Nightcaster and, uh... What is it? Azuric? Is that what it's called? I can't remember. New Legends. And Bruce Lee. Stuff like that. Just like, uh, yeah. <laughs> the Xbox uh, was a great system. Had a lot of great stuff. But, you know, overall, I'd say the PS2 was definitely a stronger platform from the library. The perspective of just the games. But if you wanted to be the most impressed, you would, you would play the Xbox. That was... That was the big reason I had the Xbox. Is, uh... You know, back then, video game consoles would still wow me a lot. Uh, and the Xbox was one of the most impressive up to that point. I mean, for me, like, it was N64, then Dreamcast, and then Xbox. Those were all- all three of those were, like, jaw-drop wow moments for me. Um... You know, Xbox is where you saw, like, crazy long draw distance with lots of detail still. Uh, very fluid frame rates a lot of times. There are many race events going on in Ridge City. Don't forget to check them all out and Then there was the whole Halo phenomenon where we would all get together and do Halo LAN parties. That was so awesome. Um, and it got some good Japanese stuff on it, too. Not anywhere near as much as the PS2, but it got some, you know, solid titles like, you know, Ninja Gaiden is a big one. It got, ended up getting some of the Dynasty Warriors games, yada yada yada. Got some of the early Sega titles. You know, Panzer Dragon Orta is one of my favorite games ever, actually. It's up there. 
And probably easily the best rail shooter I think I've ever played. And Jet Set Radio Future. Stuff like that. OG Xbox is definitely the best for first-person shooters of that era. When it comes to console gaming, yeah, it's, and you like FPSs, that's definitely the one to have. I mean, freaking Doom 3 and the expansion pack, Painkiller, Halo, Halo 2, Time Splitters 2 and 3, it's the final stretch. a bunch of other random PC ports. Yeah, the Rally Sport Challenge games were great. <laughs> we were all joking that the console would probably give you a blue screen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, so I think I actually have to get first place here. And that kind of sucks. Yeah, no, it did get Half-Life 2. It's, I mean, it's definitely not recommended to play Half-Life 2 on the Xbox. It gets really choppy. But at the time, it was great to give uh, gamers an option to, you know, to play that game on an older system. So, yeah, Black was another one. Yep. Uh, I'm trying to think. Let me look at my, my library here. Serious Sam, Serious Sam 2, Turok Evolution. Uh, I mean, it had some third-person shooters. It kind of fall into the FPS genre, like Mech Assault. Um, Dark Watch. Dark Watch was actually really good. I'm, we're going to stream that sometime. Maybe around Halloween. Uh, Breakdown, which wasn't really first-person shooter, but it was first-person. Very unique game. Speaking of uh, more Japanese games, it's got Crazy Taxi 3. Uh, it's got uh, Castlevania Curse of Darkness. It's got Otogi 1 and 2, which are both from software games. So it's got it's got a good library, but I do think that the PS2 has a stronger library overall. Um, yeah, I mean, original Xbox is fantastic. I love it. The race is about to start. I used to have like an 80 to 100 game collection and I've had to, I had to trim it down. I think I only have about 50, probably 50 games now. Maybe just under 50. Yeah, Leo. So with Half-Life 2 on Xbox, the frame rate holds up inside. Once you go out into open areas, it starts to drop a lot. And it, it kind of makes it a little redundant to play today, because you can just play it on PC. Like, any PC in this day and age can run Half-Life 2 perfectly. Uh, also, you can get the orange box on, like, Xbox 360 or PS3, which will run it even better than the ex original Xbox versions. Or, or Xbox version. Singular. I really wish I could do this without slamming into these guys. Yeah, I and Leo, I never got to experience, uh, you know, 480p to 1080i games on original Xbox back in the day. Because I just had a TV, a standard def TV with com composite and S-video. I didn't even start using S-video until a few years ago, sadly. So I didn't even get to experience S-video back in the day, because I was dumb. I didn't know that S-video was, like, that much better. The jump from composite to S video is arguably bigger than like any jump that you'll get. It's like bigger than the jump from S video to component. 
And there's still a noticeable jump from SVD to component in RGB. But the jump from composite, or especially RF, to S video, it's it's massive. It's like night and day. I just wish I knew better back in the day that I could have been viewing all my Xbox games in, in S video on my CRT. Yeah, we're gonna end up having to do this track over again too. We're in fourth place going into lap three. We had a chance here, but I kept slamming into that one opponent. We might get second, but second isn't good enough. Okay. That actually just screwed us up completely. Oh, th this might actually put us out at just the, uh, the right time to where we can just end the stream after we uh, win or lose. Yeah, so we'll get second. Second, but not first. We we're, we're actually we were really close. That's that's him. Well, yeah, liberal arts guy. Uh, a lot of multi-platform games back then were best on Xbox. You know, the games were oftentimes the same, uh, gameplay-wise and and whatnot. But graphics were, generally speaking, always better on Xbox. Either through, uh, you know, the anti-aliasing or like better texture mapping and, and graphical effects like bump mapping, or higher resolutions uh you know like enter the matrix is a great example where you can do 720p and 1080i uh so it looks definitely sharper than uh than anything you had on ps2 or gamecube um but it wasn't always that way uh, like a good example was xgra extreme g racing association it was actually i don't think i'd say it's the worst on xbox but it's in the middle like the GameCube version of that game is the best. It's got the sharpest visuals, the highest frame rate, um, arguably the best controls. Actually, that GameCube analog stick is great for racing games. It's it's really solid for racing games. Um, PS2 version, on the other hand, uh, doesn't look as sharp as the GameCube one. It also runs uh, significantly more choppy. Like it can be smooth, but when things get chaotic, the frame rate goes into frame skip mode like crazy. Uh, the original Xbox version. For some reason, it doesn't look anywhere near as sharp as the GameCube one. The colors are a lot more muted. Everything looks muddy. Uh, and I think the frame rate might even be somewhat inconsistent as well. So it's weird. It's one of those examples where the Xbox version should have been the best, um, but it wasn't. So it wasn't always like a multi-plat game was best on Xbox. But um, when done right, it should be should have been the best. And in a lot of cases, was the best, you know, for one reason or another. So... Not always the case, but yeah. So, I mean, for multi-platform games, I do recommend looking into the Xbox versions. And sometimes the Xbox ones came out later, so they had bonus content. Like Onimusha on Xbox came out later than the PS2 one. So it had extra mechanics and things like that um, that uh, might make the game more interesting. Um, but, uh, but again, the PS2 just has a much, much larger library, much uh, greater variety and then a much bigger import scene. So you get a lot more like arcade style games on PS2 as well. If you're into shoot 'em ups and stuff like that, uh, tons of shmups in Japan, you know, like Mushihima Sama, Espikaluda and, and stuff like that. Um, I've also got Radurji and 12 stag here right next to me. Um, and what other, you've got, uh, those Hudson soft, uh, re-releases remakes like adventure Island and, um, star soldier and stuff like that. Uh, which is really awesome. So, yeah. Hey, hey, Darth Lilith. Welcome back. How are you doing tonight? Did you stream tonight over on Twitch? Um, 
All right, so let's go ahead and try to retry again. We have one or two more tries. We have to get first place, apparently. Three, two, one, go! And they're off. The cars are streaming past the start line. Three laps to go. Oh, that's, that's a bad start. Yeah, definitely not a good start slamming into these guys. So, okay, so how this works apparently and I just figured this out, is you can get first through third on the courses leading up to this, and then the final course, you have to get first. And if you don't get first, you have to do the whole circuit over again. Because the announcer even says it. He says, the winner of this race determines who wins the, the, the cup or the circuit or whatever, whatever it is. You didn't stream tonight, okay. I'm gonna have to keep playing this game off YouTube. There are many race events going on in Rich City. I actually kinda don't wanna stop, but because I started late, I was intending this on being a short stream, just about two hours. Nothing crazy long. But uh, next week we'll be starting the stream at the uh, the regularly scheduled time, so 9 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah, last lap. This is my chance. Check him out. Bam! Look at that, guys. Ow, you dick! <laughs> he slammed into me, man. AI is good at doing one thing, just running right into you. No, are we we just screwed the pooch. Ah, man. Just one second. No, don't don't buy a 360 to play original Xbox games. It's not worth it. Uh, the backwards compatibility isn't that great. It's just, I mean, the original Xboxes are so cheap. You don't. And there's no reason not to have just both systems. Have a 360 for 360 games. Have an Xbox for Xbox games. Um, or you can always look at the backwards compatible list on Xbox One. Uh, because the, uh, you know, and, and see what games you want to play because Xbox one, actually, when it comes to 360 backwards compatibility, it, it plays the games better on Xbox one than, than on 360. Like uh, a lot of games will have frame rate boosts. Uh, they might load a little bit quicker, things like that. So that's, I think that's also, uh, an important angle to look at the backwards compatibility on Xbox one for 360 is actually really good. And they're continuing to roll out games on, I think, like a weekly basis or so. So. All right. Well, this is our last chance. If we don't get this, then that's it. Game over. Start. We're bringing you this race today, live 
Yeah, well, it, it depends, Timu. Some games are great, some games are not. It depends on the game. Hey, JD. Good to see you. Good turn so far. All right, good first lap. Oh no, out of control. Out of control. That's one of the risks with power sliding, is it's very easy to get out of control if you don't do it just right. That was a good power slide. Yeah, this is going to be rough, man. Last lap. Too bad. This is incredible. It's a dead heat. Check him out. The finish line is just up ahead. It's the final stretch. Oh, we got it. We got it. Last try, too. We got it. Whew. And my best lap. We did it. That was that was a good way to do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, guys, like I don't I don't bother with Xbox uh, backwards compatibility on Xbox 360. I mean, really, the only benefit is being able to play original Xbox games via HDMI. Um, but I mean, I don't, I just, I don't, I just don't worry about it. I just use my original Xbox stock, and then uh, I have my 360 separate for 360 games, and then Xbox One for modern games, and then some 360 backwards compatibility. Actually, a lot of 360 backwards compatibility. And, uh, and then last year, uh, they started rolling out, or was it the year before last? 
it's been a while now. They started rolling out original Xbox backwards compatibility on Xbox One, which is amazing because all the games run at like 1080p, six like yeah, faster load times and stuff like that. It's 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 awesome. Uh, I hope they introduce more games to that uh, that lineup, but it doesn't seem like they're focusing much on it. Hey, hey, Velcro zippers. Whew, all right. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. You're a true champion. We're, we're a true champion, guys. That's actually rough having to get first in the last the last race. So you like you don't get points for each race like you might in some other uh, in some other racing games. You just race, you get 1 through 3rd to to advance and then on the final track you have to get first place. I like how it, it tracks how many miles you've driven. That's pretty cool. It's a good indicator of uh, how long you've played without actually giving you like a time Yeah, Leo, I think you're right. Let me check, uh... You can check Major Nelson's website. And there's a, uh, a tab for uh, backwards compatibility. And then you can sort it by, um... Oh, weird, it doesn't let you sort it anymore. It used to let you sort it. Oh no, there we go. It just takes a while to load. Okay, so click on status. It takes a moment to sort. And, uh... Yeah, no original Xbox games recently. Oh, they did make Castlevania Harmony of Despair backwards compatible back in mid-March. Oh, that was two weeks ago. Oh, I didn't know that. Good to know. Because I want to stream that. Oh, and they made Marathon. Marathon 2. Backwards compatible. That was at the end of February. Ah, very nice. Lost Planet 2 and 3 and Lost Planet 1. Back in uh, late February. Resident Evil Code Veronica X is backwards compatible. I mean, they're still adding regular 360 games. Um, Crackdown 2 was March 8th. Brothers in Arms Hell's Highway was March 21st. Air Mech Arena was March 21st. And then Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter 2 was just... Maybe today. This is new. Yeah, so they're constantly updating it, but they haven't done original Xbox in a while, which is kind of a shame. I really want to see more OG Xbox games on the backwards compatibility plan. Or program. Because again, like, dude, like the best way to play Panzer Dragoon Order now is via Xbox One. Preferably Xbox One X on a 4K display. Because you can play the game in 4K 60 FPS. It's, in it's insane, man. Uh, seeing Morrowind run on the Xbox One at 1080p 60 FPS. Instead of the original Xbox's 480i. Actually, let me see. Um, yeah, because I have more wins. And it is... Yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it's 480i. It doesn't even support 480p on Xbox. Seeing a, that run at 1080p, 60fps, when the original Xbox version would run at, like, 20. <laughs> much of the time. It would get really choppy, and the load times were super long. But they're super fast on Xbox One. It's it's great. I definitely want to see more of that. Dude, 
Do original Xbox saves on a 360 transfer to Xbox One via the cloud? Uh, they do, but you have to have Xbox Live Gold for that to work. So, you don't have to have Xbox Live Gold to transfer Xbox One saves to the cloud or 360 backwards compatible saves to the cloud and retrieve them. But if you're on a 360, you have to have gold to send the saves to the cloud. Um, yeah, it's kind of a bummer. And be careful if you don't have gold and you want to transfer saves between systems, it will, um, it'll, I think it, uh, it'll actually remove the game from the cloud. So like, I was on, um, I was playing Dark Souls 1 on my, yeah, I was playing Dark Souls 1 on my Xbox One a couple years ago via backwards compatibility. And um, I wanted to transfer the save to my 360 in my game room, and I did. Um, but then I couldn't upload, I could grab it from the cloud on the 360, but I couldn't send it back to the cloud without Xbox Live Gold. It was really weird. Um, and it ended up removing my save from the Xbox One in the process, or something like that. It, it was really weird, I was really disappointed. Uh, with it, and I didn't want to sign up for Xbox Live Gold just to send my save file back, so... Yes, yes, Leo. Oh, I mean, we could try to do that soon. I could- I could try to do that soon. I definitely wanna- I definitely wanna do that. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah, so the next circuit will be even faster since we got a new engine. But yeah. That is Ridge Racer 5, guys. It is, uh... It's an awesome game. If you have a PS2, and, uh, or if you have a PS3 with backwards compatibility, uh, I highly recommend this game. It is awesome. It is super cheap. It'll cost you less than four dollars to get a copy, complete in box and everything. It's got uh, great style. Uh, I think the graphics still hold up relatively decently. Uh, pretty unique soundtrack. Uh, and as long as I mean, you can use analog controls, but I have actually preferred to use the D-pad in this one. Um, that's where Ridge Racer 6, I think, is definitely improved, is the analog controls are a lot better. I mean, you don't really want to use the D-pad in that game, it's just all analog, so... But, uh, yeah, it's, it's great. I love it. I'm definitely gonna be playing more of this on Twitch. Uh, off-stream. No, well, not off-stream, but off the YouTube stream. But this kind of got me in the right direction. I'll definitely be going back to it to... To try to get through the whole game again. But yeah, highly recommended. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, the stream, and uh, hopefully some of you guys that you know are mildly interested in this, you know, check it out. It's definitely worth playing. Uh, definitely worth trying. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Uh, like I said, this was going to be a short stream because I started late. I remember the uh, last Thursday of each month, I'm going to be trying to go to a uh, local pinball tournament. Uh, they do this monthly tournament at the local pinball bar. And, uh, it's kind of a way for me to get out and see people, talk to, talk to the locals and whatnot, actually get out and socialize. Because most of my time is spent indoors now. I, I go to work and I come home and I stream, um, practicing for videos for YouTube. And, uh, and sometimes just playing games I want. Like, this week I've been focusing on Devil May Cry 5 on Xbox One. Um, ended up beating that game, uh, twice, and I'm gonna start a new playthrough sometime in the next couple of days, most likely. By the way, if you guys want to see a Devil May Cry 5, uh, stream here on YouTube, let me know. Um, gonna try to gauge interest on that one while I still have the game. I might trade the game in, I'm not sure yet. Um, but if you guys want to see that, uh, I could, uh... 
I could try to try to do. I think it would probably take me about eight hours to go through the whole game, skipping through all the story sequences and whatnot. Uh, JD asks, do I like the Need for Speed games? Uh, I haven't played a lot of them. I like the first one on 3DO quite a bit. Uh, but I haven't really played many past that, so I don't- I can't really comment too much more than that- too much further than that. Uh, I am going to do that, Mike, yeah. I'm not sure when, but hopefully soon, because I'm- I'm kind of on a Devil May Cry kick right now, thanks to Part 5. Yeah, like, we were playing Part 1 on Twitch earlier this morning. And, uh, I definitely want to fire up three sometime soon. And, uh, I actually went to Best Buy today, hoping that they'd have the, uh, Devil May Cry HD collection for modern systems. Not 360, PS3, but, uh, Xbox One or PS4. And, nope, they didn't have it for either system. Uh, so that was kind of a bummer. But, I do have parts one and three on PS2. I have part four on 360. Um... And I have DMC Double May Cry uh, Director's or Definitive Edition on Xbox One. Would I ever do Resident Evil 4 on PS2? No. Uh, because I'd rather do it on GameCube or Wii. Uh, that's the only Resident Evil game you guys will probably ever see me play on this channel. I'd like to get my brother over to do the PS1 Resident Evils uh, or Code Veronica. But as far as uh, Resident Evil 4, that's the only one I got into. Um, but I'd rather do it on GameCube or Wii. I have the Wii version, which I think is almost identical to the GameCube one. Maybe a few extra features. And I'm pretty sure I can use a GameCube controller on it and play it like the GameCube version instead of using the motion controls. Office says he'll watch whatever. As long as he he remembers to watch. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Uh, well, I don't have the GameCube one, Mike. I'd have to buy it again, but I don't. Uh, trying to trying to hold back on uh, my game purchases right now, for the most part. You know, I I, I I'll splurge here and there. But, uh, but, yeah, I'm trying to be very selective about what I buy. And if I already have it on, on Wii, there's no point in me buying the GameCube one. Because it's, it's basically the same thing. But, uh, alrighty, folks. Well, I guess that is going to do it for me. So, I hope you enjoyed this stream. Uh, we did two cups. It actually, you know, it took a decent amount of time just to go through two of them. Over two hours. Yeah, Alpha, no, I'm sure the Wii controls do work well, but... My hands are getting, like, old and, uh... You know, holding up, like, a Wii mode to aim and stuff like that kind of wears out my hands after a while, if that makes any sense. I'd rather just use, like, a the standard analog setup that you could use with the GameCube version. But uh, no, we'll we'll definitely try that sometime. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe October. Cuz I haven't done really any Resident Evil game on this channel. I don't know. We'll see. It gives me gives me food for thought. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for me guys. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I will be streaming on Twitch in a little bit. Probably just a couple minutes, actually. It's gonna be one of those kick back, relax, and drink streams. Uh, I'm gonna be testing out my N64 Ultra that I got back. It's Ultra HDMI modded. I mentioned that on YouTube a few months ago, but I finally got it back. Uh, I do enjoy Dance Dance Revolution. Yeah, I can't play it though, because I'm in a second floor apartment. So, I would be pounding on my neighbor's heads if I did that. I actually used to play DDR religiously for several years. That was when I was like 150 pounds. <laughs> now I'm like 250 pounds. Not quite. I actually lost a couple. We're down in like the low 240s now. I, I'm going in the opposite direction, but slowly. <laughs> no, I love DDR. DDR got me into... Um, 
Uh, DDR got me into Beat Mania, which then got me into uh, a little bit of Keyboard Mania and Drum Mania. And then uh, I also dabbled with a lot of frequency and amplitude. Uh, a little bit of guitar here when it came out. But DDR uh, was the big one, and then Beat Mania 2DX was the other big one. So... But yeah, guys, take care. Also, thanks to all the p recent Patreon backers. Another big shout-out to Classic Gaming Quarterly and Brian Hornberger, who backed the channel this week. As always, if you're interested in supporting my show through Patreon, links are in the description box, as always. Also, we got Discord. Uh, Discord is not a Patreon-only thing, but you do get a Patreon-only section on the Discord if you do sign up for Patreon. But everyone that likes to uh, chat about video games, check out my Discord as well. Uh, the invite link is in the description box below. Uh, we get a lot of good conversations going on there with the uh, the few regulars we have. So if you're interested in that, feel free to jump in and join in on that. Uh, also, thanks to all the super chatters. No super chats on this stream, actually. We have we have ended our super chat streak. So now now some of these names here are gonna get knocked off because <laughs> it's the last 30 days. But uh, no, still it was a fun stream. I appreciate the chat. I appreciate you guys hanging out. And, uh, I, I have, you've given me the motivation to play more Ridge Racer 5 on my own time. So, I will definitely be doing that. Uh, but alrighty guys, have yourselves a fantastic day or night, wherever you are in the world. Uh, this archive will probably be up sometime tomorrow. And, uh, hopefully we don't get any copyright claims on it, but we'll see. And, um, yeah, I might, I don't know, I might be back Saturday to do a stream, maybe not, I don't know, we'll see how I feel, we'll see what I'm doing and how I feel, I don't have anything planned at the moment, whereas last week I, th I thought to myself, you know, I can do, I can do some MS-DOS stuff, uh, but today, uh, or this week, I'm not sure, we might not do a Saturday stream, um, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see how I feel, no Let's Play this week, uh, new Let's Play will be next week, and then, uh, I should have my Super NT by this weekend. And I should have my, um... Yeah, either by this weekend or early next week. So we're gonna do Demon's Crest on next Thursday's stream. So watch out for that. Demon's Crest is a fantastic game. I've done multiple playthroughs of it on this channel. But I want to play it again, so we're gonna do another playthrough. Um... Okay! I think that's all I've got to talk about, so I'm, I'm out of here. Take it easy, guys, and uh, I guess until the next one... Well, I just said take it easy. I don't know. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. <laughs>